Hello there kiddies, hope you're having a ruddy lovely day. I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're checking out the Pixel Watch 2. It may look the same as the original one, but it now boasts upgraded safety, fitness and stress tracking features. And let me tell you, if I'm going to have to do exercise to test this thing out, there's going to be some stress involved. You can grab the Wi-Fi model of Pixel Watch 2 from 349 quid, same as before. Although that LTE model is now more expensive at 400 pund. But the original Pixel Watch has now dropped to 279, so is the Pixel Watch 2 worth it? Well, let's whip it on out the box and then we'll magically prance forward in time about a fortnight after I've been wearing it full time so I can deliver my in-depth Pixel Watch 2 review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So inside the box we naturally have one Pixel Watch 2. You've got an alternative larger strap as well as the small one that's pre-installed on the Pixel Watch 2. And you've got Google's all new and much maligned proprietary charging dock. Way. And that right there is everything you get chucked in the box with the Pixel Watch 2. Now the Pixel Watch 2 sports a 41mm case and just like Google's original wearable and indeed it looks identical in practically every way. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the Pixel Watch is a beautiful wee wrist pebble that really stands out from other really chunky smartwatches. Plus if you can't afford this watch you can just buy a Pixel Watch 1 and tell all your mates it's a Pixel Watch 2. Make them think you're loaded. Unfortunately this does mean that the chunky bezels of the original Pixel Watch have been retained but most of the watch faces here are completely black to really mask that fact as are all of the various tiles and apps and everything. One difference for the Pixel Watch 2 however is that the stainless steel frame of the original has been replaced here with aluminium. So now the watch is even lighter than before, weighs about half as much as many other smartwatches. I was a wee bit worried when I started reviewing the Pixel Watch 2 that the change in materials would mean it would scratch up a bit more easily. Touch wood so far it's still in pristine condition but check back again in a few months. And then you've got the same level of protection up front on that display as the original Pixel Watch. It's again Gorilla Glass 5. And again this sets alarm bells ringing because I know a few people who've scratched up the screen on their original Pixel Watch. So it's kind of a shame that Google didn't upgrade to a bit of sapphire glass, something a bit more hardy for the Pixel Watch 2. Although again, touch word after several weeks of use, the Pixel Watch 2 is still in perfect nick. No scuffs or anything on that display. And as you would expect, Pixel Watch 2 fully water resistant can withstand pressures of up to 5 atmospheres. Now Google is offering the Pixel Watch 2 at a small selection of colours. Mine is obviously the highly exciting black model. But at least it all blends into one quite nicely. As we already saw back at the start of the video, you've got both small and large straps bundled in the box. And while some smartwatch straps seem overly complex for no real reason, the Pixel Watch 2 pretty easy to get on and off, no worries there. That small strap fits my wee toddler wrists perfectly and the silicon material nice and comfortable to wear even for prolonged periods. Very gentle on the skin, lovely stuff. As before though, you can snap them on and off easily enough. And that large strap really is large, so no worries if you've got arms the size of a f***ing Volvo. Now setting up the Pixel Watch 2, very straightforward. You just got to download Google's Pixel Watch app, which you'll find pre-installed on the likes of Pixel smartphones. The two find each other automatically and you've just got to tap a load of buttons, mostly yes I consent to this, yes I consent to that, yes please take all my data. And I've had bugger all problems with the connectivity these past few weeks. The watch and the phone have just stayed synced up and I've paired it with a couple of different phones just to check same story. However, that said, one of the fresh new features of the Pixel Watch 2 is the ability to transfer it to a new phone when you upgrade without having to reset the watch and basically start again or at least in bloody theory. Because when I tried using this transfer tool to shift the Pixel Watch 2 from my OnePlus phone to my Pixel 8, every single time the watch just popped up with a lol no f***ing chance matey message. And the watch got stuck in a permanent loop which was really fun, so despite my best attempts to cancel the transfer, I ended up just having to reset the watch. So not the greatest new feature in the world, Google, gotta say, hope that's sorted soon. And also everyone else who I spoke to who tried to do the same, transfer the watch from one phone to another, had exactly the same problem. So, do you not test this stuff? Anyway, sorry, I need to calm down a bit quickly. And taking a moment to check in with what's here emotionally. If it's anxiousness, yes. agitation, or yeah. restlessness. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, here in the watch app, you can basically fully customize your Pixel Watch 2. Change up the watch faces, the tiles, which apps are allowed to give you a little buzz on the wrist. 
all of your various settings, including your safety and emergency contact staff. And you can dive on into the Google Play Store from this app as well and install fresh apps on your watch. Now, Google hasn't really made any changes when it comes to the display. It's once again a 1.2 inch circular AMOLED panel. And it's once again dinky enough to make it a hard recommendation if your eyesight is less than stellar. Once again, nice and crisp at least, so tiny text is legible if your peepers are up to it. 320 pixels per inch, and it also hits a thousand nits on the max brightness. That auto brightness works perfectly, so you've got clear visibility, even with tons of outdoor glare. As for those watch faces, we've got quite a few different analog and digital efforts to choose between. And yeah, I did find that quite a lot of the default ones here on the Pixel Watch 2 were a bit samey, a bit hard to choose between, but at least most of them you can tweak them with different color options and also change up the complications. Got lots of different options to choose from here. And then there's my personal favorite, the Google Photos watch face, which allows you to have a slideshow of up to 30 of your favorite pics on there. Sadly, that 30 limit is still in effect. You can't just have it streaming, you know, your favorite recent photos from your phone or anything. You'll have to go in and manually choose them. And then as always, the Play Store is absolutely packed with extra watch faces. Some of them are free, some of them you will have to pay a couple of quid for. You certainly got plenty of choice, good diverse selection. And I've got very few complaints when it comes to Wear OS itself. It's nice and intuitive. You can swipe left and right to flick through all of your various tiles, which are of course completely customizable as usual. If you're not familiar with Wear OS, these are basically just mini widgets. Tap on one and it will take you straight into the relevant app. So you can have a bit of a deep dive into some more information. And these can quickly and easily be reordered either here on the watch or via the watch app on your smartphone. And you've got plenty more that you can stick in. Basically, lots of health related stuff and all of your important features like timers, notes, etc. As always, you access your notifications with a flick up. Otherwise, you can just twist the old dial. And the notifications handling, excellent as always. Just tap on any notification to check out the full message. And then you can either quick reply with emojis, a miniature keyboard, which is very cute and wee. And strangely, not absolutely terrible to type on. It doesn't make me want to load up the anxiety app again. Certainly the excellent autocorrect definitely helps. But it's certainly much easier just to reply with your voice using the built-in mic. The only problem with this is it does censor bad words like f and twit. Wanker. Wanker. Not blanket. Wanker. 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 There we go. And I also like how on the Pixel Watch 2, you can individually set the vibration strength for the notifications, for ring when you get a call, and for your alarms as well. And on the maximum strength, it's pretty powerful as well. So certainly it'll rouse you from a very deep slumber, that's for sure. Now slapped here on the Pixel Watch 2, you'll find all of the usual googly goodness. And you can access those apps with a quick tap of the crown. Otherwise, you can also tap this secreted away secondary button just above the crown which brings up a list of all your recent apps and yeah pretty much all of the services you'll find on your smartphone you'll find here on the pixel watch 2 as well you can access google pay with a double tap of the crown you got smart home control right here on your wrist as well which i would like to demonstrate but as usual with home it's doing that thing where half of my lights are rather usefully shown as offline hooray doesn't seem to matter which brand of light I use. I'm always getting all offline or cannot connect. But in the instances where it does actually work, it works really well. You can change the brightness level. You can change the colors right there from the smartwatch. However, sadly, there's still no way of streaming video or even checking out any stills from your Nest doorbell when somebody's at the front door. But good old Maps works as brilliantly as ever. This can run independently on your watch. Otherwise, you can get turn by turn updates direct from your phone as well. You can check out maps as you're going along, zoom in with the crown, it's really great stuff. But one of the big upgrades for the Pixel Watch 2 is the emergency SOS shenanigans. So for instance, now you've got fall detection here on the Pixel Watch 2. I haven't actually had a chance to test this out yet, so let's give it a go. Apparently after 30 seconds or so, you should get a little nudge on your wrist saying, Hey, are you, are you alright buddy? Oh god, this floor is bloody filthy. Yeah, bugger all. Maybe I'm just falling a bit too dramatically. Who knows? Let's try it again. Yeah, still bugger all. And now my hip really hurts, so I'm not doing that again. But yeah, squirreled away inside of that safety and emergency app, you'll find some very worthwhile tools. You've got the likes of the safety check, for instance, as also found on those Pixel 8 phones. This can send your location to friends or families if a timer expires, which is great news if you're walking home alone 
etc. Just for a bit of added peace of mind, make sure you actually reach your destination safe. There's also settings for if you're, for instance, taking a taxi home late at night or if you're going on a bit of a hike by yourself. And there's also emergency sharing, which can share your location with your key contacts for 24 hours. And this location sharing will work even if you don't have your phone on you, as long as you have the LTE model of the Pixel Watch 2, but only also if you're a Fitbit Premium member, which seems a bit tight of Google considering it's a safety feature. Otherwise, in order to do the location sharing, if you just have the Wi-Fi model or you're not a Fitbit Premium member, then you will need your phone on you as well. As for the Google Assistant, works exactly as you would expect here on the Pixel Watch 2. You've got good old voice activation as usual. I won't say the key phrase in case I set everyone's smart speaker off. Otherwise, you can also just press and hold this secondary button and up she pops. And of course, the Google Assistant generally well behaved, but can be a bit balky on occasion, just like the smart home controls. The actual mic on the Pixel Watch 2 picks up on your voice nice and clearly, even if you're in quite a noisy environment. And that built-in speaker is certainly nice and loud as well. You can adjust the volume if you want to. What should I do if I think I've broken my hip? You usually be given painkillers and have an x-ray to check if your hip is broken and to decide what treatment is best for you. And in the assistance tile you can also set up shortcuts to any requests that you're constantly making, so in my case what's on my calendar. Just a quick tap of that. You're continuing an event called Half Term until Fry 27. It's especially handy if you feel a bit of a twat talking to your wrist in public. But what have you got actually powering the Pixel Watch 2? Well, out goes that old Exynos, thank God, and that's been replaced with Qualcomm Snapdragon W5 Gen 1. It's not the Plus model, as found in the new Xiaomi Watch 2 Pro and the TicWatch 5 Pro, which is a bit tight, but no complaints on the performance here. It's overall pretty smooth, and you're certainly not hanging around waiting for apps to load up or anything. And naturally, you've got all your Fitbit-related health tracking shenanigans integrated on here once again. You've actually got an upgraded multi-path optical heart rate sensor here on the Pixel Watch 2. And so far, this certainly seems to be as accurate as I can possibly tell. Gives you a readout of your heart rate range for the day. You can see exactly how you've been doing. See if you're hitting all of those goals for the day, the week, the month, etc. And the Pixel Watch 2 can now also read skin temperature, can even uh, monitor that while you're asleep for reasons. And the Pixel Watch 2 also boasts continuous EDA detection, so it can pick up on any electrodermal changes. No, I've got no idea either, but apparently it's really useful in measuring stress. So the Pixel Watch 2 can kindly inform you when you might be feeling a bit tense, as if the crippling anxiety and stomach pains weren't enough of a clue. But Fitbit does award you a stress score at the end of every day, so you can see if your general mood is improving or getting worse. And you've got a handy reflections tool as well, which allows you to just see how you're feeling at any given moment and why that might be the case. And as you can see, this is tied in with how much physical exercise you're getting, your sleep patterns, etc. And as well as the standard guided breathing shenanigans on the Pixel Watch 2, as long as you're a Fitbit Premium member, you've got access to a whole bunch of mindfulness sessions which can boost your positivity, just calm you down when you're feeling a bit stressed or anxious, including one here from third-rate Jeff Goldblum. And you've also got the usual ECG shenanigans on here as well, so your Pixel Watch 2 can warn you if your heart rate is too high, too low, or if it's irregular. Now when it comes to tracking workouts, well there's still only 40 workout modes here on the Pixel Watch, which is quite small compared with a lot of rivals, but then to be fair, a lot of rivals count board games and eSports as, uh, as actual exercise, so yeah. There's something here for everyone, and there are some generic enough like sport that you can basically use them for pretty much anything. You got your real-time feedback right there on the display, and at any point you can just quickly and easily end the workout like so. And Google has also added automatic workout tracking on the Pixel Watch 2. So say, for instance, you've been walking for about five minutes, you get a little buzz on your wrist, say, oh, we reckon you might be doing a bit of a wonder right now. Do you want to track it? Yes, please, or bugger off, sir. And the great thing is that your walk or hike or jog or whatever will be tracked from the moment you started it as well. Your distance covered, your pace and everything, everything apart from your GPS, that will only start to be tracked once you hit yes, please. And this feature should be retroactively brought to the original Pixel Watch as well, so don't necessarily worry too much about upgrading if that one really tickles your fancy. And inside the coaching section of the Fitbit app, you'll not only find all of these mindfulness sessions that I was banging on about, you'll also find plenty of fitness sessions. You've got a broad range of workouts here, everything from general fitness training, strength, a bit of high intensity interval training, 
You can quickly find specific workouts for no equipment or dumbbells, kettlebells, whatever. Of course, you will once again need to be a Fitbit Premium subscriber to enjoy access to all of these workouts and everything. Thankfully, Google is at least gifting you with six free months of Fitbit Premium when you buy a Pixel Watch 2 so you can decide if it's for you or not. Of course, you will have to start paying eight quid a month once that free trial is up if you want to keep the Fitbit Premium access. Otherwise, you can just accept, hey, we're all going to die someday. Just put that money towards booze and pies. And the last Pixel Watch feature I want to mention is the sleep tracking, which was pretty accurate on the original. And it's once again the case here on the Pixel Watch 2. You can get a detailed breakdown of your full night's kip, how long you spent awake, staring at the ceiling, etc. And once again, you can be lectured on going to bed earlier, not drinking so much coffee and booze before you stumble into bed, etc. It's not really my kind of thing, but if you're into it, it's there. And then of course, Google is advertising the Pixel Watch 2 as having all day battery life. And what does that mean? It means you will be recharging it every damn day. Finally, lasts pretty much bang on 24 hours between charges. And that's, you know, with fairly standard use. Got the always on display on. I'm tracking maybe a single workout every day. Got the notifications, etc., etc. There is a power saver mode on here as well. And this basically just deactivates the always on display and the raise to wake features. That's pretty much it. I found even with that turned on, the battery still drains at around sort of three to four percent an hour. So it maybe lasts a day and a quarter, day and a half instead of just a straight up day. So it's pretty much pointless. So yeah, if charging up your smartwatch every bloody day sounds more annoying than Jim's Corden, well, I'd recommend maybe going for the Xiaomi Watch 2 Pro, which I recently reviewed. Otherwise, the Tick Watch instead tends to last a few days. Or also the bigger model of the Samsung Galaxy Watch tends to last sort of two days, maybe three at a big old stretch. And charging up the Pixel Watch 2 is a wee bit quicker than it was with the original, but it still takes the best part of an hour. So that's basically an hour every day. You're not going to be wearing your watch unless you want to charge it up overnight, in which case, of course, you don't get the sleep tracking and all that shenanigans. Oh, and also a bit of a downgrade for the Pixel Watch 2. It's now a proprietary charging deck. It doesn't charge wirelessly. As you can see, they've got teeny weeny little pins on there, which make contact with the back of the watch to charge it up. So not only can you not charge your Pixel Watch 2 by slapping it on the back end of your Pixel 8 or any other smartphone with reverse wireless charging, but also I find that occasionally I'll stick the Pixel Watch 2 on there to charge, it'll start charging, and then at some point, maybe about five minutes later, I'll just accidentally nudge the watch slightly by, you know, shifting my drink or something like that. It'll lose connection and then it won't actually fully charge at all. And then I'm straight back on the bloody anxiety sessions. And anyway, that right there, my lovelies, is my full Pixel Watch 2 review. And I've got to say, it's very much a love-hate relationship. I really like a lot of the features on here. I think the notification support is excellent. Wear OS is just brilliant. The fact you've got to charge it up every single day and you'll need to fork out eight quid a month for Fitbit Premium to really get the most out of it once that free trial is over, it kind of sucks. And also, tougher materials would have been nice just to, you know, keep me from being quite so terrified every time I accidentally slap a wall or something. But anyway, that's my thoughts. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Pixel Watch 2 down below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.